Uh, this working? Uh, hi. So, yeah, so I think maybe some of you have seen this talk before. I gave it two weeks ago uh, at the fine grain complexity seminar here at Simons. And uh, yeah, so I'm sorry if you're hearing it again, but you know, you're here to, for the fine grain complexity, and I think this is one of the most fine grain results. So, <laughs> hope you like it a uh, second time. Uh, so, uh, wh one of the results that I'm going to be telling you about is this. Uh, Paul log shape is a lower bound made. And, uh, and this, what I'm going to show you is that you can take uh, some result, some shaving logs result, that looks like a very uh, algorithms result, like a very soda paper. And then you know, we show that this already implies uh, a very CCC result, very complexity result. Some class does not have some kind of uh, Boolean formulas. Okay. So, but, uh, before we get there, let me tell you the story. So the, the main problem that uh, I'll be talking about for most of the talk is the LCS. It's the longest common subsequence. Very, very basic and simple. You have two uh, strings, two sequences of length n, and you ask what is the longest sequence that appears in both of them as a, as a subsequence. In this example, this is subsequence that appears in both, uh, and you can think of it as some kind of matching problem, trying to find the maximum matching between uh, the two strings. Okay, so in undergrad, you've all seen an n squared time algorithm. Um, it's known how to shave a log squared factor, uh, uh, but this is this is the best known and you know very very you know important question is can you do better? Um, if you don't like LCS, you can think about edit distance as well in the stock. So it's the this famous problem. You have two sequences, and you ask what is the minimum number of uh, insertions, deletions, and substitutions that you need in order to transform one into the other. Again, it's pretty, it's pretty basic as an easy definition, uh, but it also has uh, a lot of applications, a very important problem in practice. Uh, and again, the best algorithm is this n squared over log squared. <clears throat> and if you generalize edit distance a bit further, you can get some problems that are very, very important for uh, biology, for example. Uh, like this local alignment problem, you're given two DNA sequences, and you, you want to find out the two kind of parts that are most similar to each other under some similarity that is defined with some uh, scoring matrix. Um, and uh, people want to solve this problem on huge sequences, n is like a few billions. And uh, in this case, this n squared over log squared is, is just too slow. And uh, you know, as a proof that this is too slow and that it's very important, there's this paper from the 90s that uh, you know, shows a linear time algorithm for, for this problem that is not, it's a heuristic. It doesn't, uh, you can't prove that it works. And this paper has got more than 50,000 uh, citations. So it's a very important problem. Uh, yeah, so, and, uh, you know, we, do, we really want to know if these problems can be solved faster. And uh, recently we showed that uh, with Virginia and Oren, we showed that uh, a truly subquadratic algorithm, uh, you know, refutes a strong exponential time hypothesis, which I'll tell you about uh, later. Uh, but uh, this was for the kind of the harder version of the problem. And then in a really great result, uh, Arthur and Piotr uh, showed that uh, the same lower bound holds even for edit distance. This is a great theory paper, but it also had, you know, it made it to the news. So it's a wonderful uh, result. Um, yeah, and, and so uh, in follow-up works uh, extended this lower bound for edit distance also to uh, LCS, longest common subsequence problem. Uh, a nice work by uh, Carl and Marvin uh, kind of show, gives a general framework for getting these uh, strong ETH lower bounds. It says that uh, any problem that asks you to compute some similarity measure over two sequences, uh, and when this similarity measure has some kind of property, it admits alignment gadgets then uh, you're going to get this uh, quadratic lower bound under a strong ETH. And uh, some examples that they show in their framework is uh, at the distance in LCS even on binary sequences. So the problem is still hard even when the alphabet is binary. Another example is this dynamic time warping distance from uh, uh, like, uh, speech recognition. Okay. And uh, of course, these results are a part of this long uh, line of work on strong ETH lower bound that has uh, there's a long list of such lower bounds from all over uh, computer science. Okay. And this is a part of the bigger picture of like, the conditional lower bounds in P that you know, this workshop is about. 
And what uh, the, the work that I'm telling you about, uh, what we do is we look at this class and we find a subclass of it that is much harder than the rest. Okay. So, so let's let's uh, you know go back to the strong ETH and look at it. This uh, conjecture that's giving us all these lower bounds. Uh, it's about KSAT. So you're given a KCNF formula, and you're asked whether it's uh, satisfiable. Uh, so for any fixed k, you can do better than 2 to the n. So you can do 1.9 to the n for any uh, small enough k. But as, as k grows, this, this becomes 2 to the n. And uh, strong ETH essentially says that there's no epsilon such that for all k, you can solve uh, uh, k sat and 2 minus epsilon to the n. You can think of it as just saying that CNF sat. So just, you know, uh, you're given a CNF, you don't restrict the width of the clause. Uh, it cannot be solved in two minus epsilon to the n. Okay. So it's it's you know it's a plausible assumption. Uh, I find it plausible because uh, SAT is like one of the most famous problem well study problems in computer science. So you know if if there were faster algorithms, you know we would expect to have found them. Um, but uh, there there aren't that many uh, reasons to believe it. So uh, if it's false, then you know. So it's known that it, like, it's true for certain kinds of algorithms and so on, but uh, there's no very surprising consequences of, of it being false. Okay. So in this work, we, we kind of look at uh, this conjecture and we look at the CNF part, and uh, we say that it's, it's kind of the weakness of strong ETH. And let, let me tell you why. So a, gen a general SAT problem is, looks like this. You're given some function. Uh, some function b that takes some uh, n bits and outputs uh, one bit. And uh, sat asks you whether this function is satisfiable. Is there, is there some input that makes it output one? And uh, if you just you know, treat this function as a black box, you don't try to analyze it or anything, then of course you need uh, kind of two to the n uh, queries for this. So you're going to need two to the n time. But of course, a clever algorithm is going to try to analyze the, the, the function that it's given to him with some representation. And, uh, and the, the hardness of SAT depends on how obfuscating this uh, representation is. So for example, if the function is given in a DNF form, or of AND, then you know, it's super easy to, to solve SAT on these things. You know. Just check whether you know, it's super trivial. You can do it in linear time. Okay. On the other hand, if the function is represented with a complex uh, you know, code of uh, some Turing machine, or some complex thing that is, you know, trying to obfuscate uh, the kind of the functionality of the function, then you know we have no idea how how to figure out uh, whether it's satisfiable. Uh, another example is if you're just giving some complex circuit, uh, you know, with current kind of ideas that we have in computer science, we don't know how to analyze circuits and understand whether they're satisfiable. And so, uh, so there's this hierarchy of. Uh, of kind of sad problems. So at the bottom, we have these DNFs that are very easy to, to you know, figure out if they're satisfiable. And we have complex things like non deterministic securing machines that we don't know how to analyze. And in the middle, of course, there's, there's uh, many things. Uh, for example, uh, if you look at uh, polylog depth circuits, the class NC, then these things are capable of computing many, many kind of complex functions like uh, one-way functions and uh, all sorts of things from uh, cryptography that you know they try to obfuscate their behavior, um, and uh, and what uh, so what strong ETH the kind of the standard strong ETH says is that even on this like hierarchy even uh, something that's very low like a CNF is uh, is hard to solve SAT for even when you're given a CNF you cannot do two minus epsilon to the n. And because of the sparsification lemma, you can even assume that the CNF has linear size. So even when I give you a linear size uh, CNF, you cannot analyze it and, and solve that. Um, and notice that uh, when you go a little bit lower, so three CNFs, for example, it's known how to do it in 1.4 to the n. So, so this is kind of the lowest place where you can put the line. And, uh, and the higher up you go, you can define the corresponding set. Uh, and then it, it becomes more and more plausible. And uh, the main question that we ask in this work is, uh, can we prove lower bounds under this more complex uh, strong ETH? So for a more complex uh, class of circuits, C, or function C, uh, 
can we uh, show, you know, base kind of the hardness NP framework on uh, the C Seth? That would be, give us a better kind of uh, foundation for for our lower bounds. Uh, and uh, this this kind of uh, wasn't obvious at all because uh, all these strong ETH lower bounds they really abuse the simplicity of CNFs. Uh, if you've seen them, you you know what I'm talking about. Um, Okay, and so this is our main result. Uh, we go very high up in the hierarchy. We, we show that you can reduce SAT on very complex things, like non-deterministic branching programs, uh, to uh, very fundamental problems like LCS, at a distance, and some others. So uh, now we can base lower bounds under this much more plausible branching program set. So let me uh, tell you what branching programs are in case you haven't seen them before. Um, so a branching program is just a graph. It's a layer graph. It has uh, some width. So each layer has W nodes. Think of W as three or five. Um, it has T layers. This is the, the length of the program. And uh, you think of T as being some polynomial. And uh, it's a computational model. Uh, so you give it some input and it tells you it either accepts or rejects. And the way it does it is, is by looking at the graph. So each edge in this graph is labeled by some kind of constraint. Each, each edge says xi equals 0 or xi equals 1 for some xi. Uh, and uh, once you get an input, it uh, kind of uh, restricts the edges that are satisfied by this input. And then the question just becomes whether there is a path from s to t, from the start node to the accept node of the program. Okay. Uh, you can also think of non-deterministic branching programs. And the difference between the two is that uh, in the deterministic case, each node has two outgoing edges, one labeled with xi equals 0, one with 1. But in the non-deterministic case, you can have multiple edges labeled by, uh, like, you know, x3 equals 1 can have uh, more than one place to go to. And so when you restrict the, the input, when you're given some input and you look at the restricted program, in the deterministic case, it's just the degrees are all 1, but in general, it can be like, you know, it restricts some subgraph, and it's a reachability problem. Can S reach T in this uh, subgraph? And uh, so the branching program SAT uh, is you're given some branching program on n variables. Oh, so notice that uh, uh, the, each variable is going to appear many times in this program. The length is like polynomial, n to the 10, but there's only n variables. So each variable appears many times. So I give you some branching program on n variables, uh, say polynomial length, constant width, and uh, I ask you if it's satisfiable. Uh, you know, so this is the branching program set. Uh, a naive algorithm just tries all inputs and uh, just uh, you know checks reachability or whatever, and it runs in uh, like two to the n time essentially. And uh, the branching program set says that you cannot do, uh, solve this in uh, 1.99 to the n. Um, so here's here's our main result. So it's it's a reduction. Uh, we show that uh, you can take SAT on non-deterministic branching programs on n variables with w and length t, and you can reduce it either to edit distance on uh, binary sequences or LCS on binary sequences, where the length of these sequences is two to the n over two, which is the big term, times some uh, dependence on the length and the and the width. And this, notice that uh, in the kind of standard case where uh, the length is polynomial and the width is constant, this is a polynomial uh, factor. So it's, uh, it's much smaller than this 2 to the n over 2. And so uh, from this reduction, we get the corollary that if LCS can be solved in truly subquadratic time, then uh, you can solve set on branching programs that are very huge. Like, you know, it might have width 5, but the length can be uh, 2 to the little of n. Uh, even for such huge things, you can figure out set in uh, 2 minus delta to the n time. So why am I telling you about these branching programs? Uh, well, uh, these, these models of computation are very expressive. Uh, so you can take any kind of uh, Turing machine that uses uh, uh, like log w space and, uh, and runs in times t and just, uh, you know, look, we can reduce this to a branching program of with w and length t, so it can, you know, it can represent bounded space computations very well. 
Uh, there's also the famous Barrington's theorem that says that any circuit of depth D can be, uh, there's an equivalent branching program on the same input uh, that, uh, that has width 5 and 4 to the D length. So for, this implies that if you have NC1 circuits, log depth circuits, then they can be just translated into polynomial length branching programs. Even if you had NC circuits, polylog depth circuits, then they still uh, have branch programs of pseudo polynomial size, uh, which will still be captured by our, uh, our, our theorem. And so uh, because of this expressibility of the branching programs, we get uh, these corollaries. So if you solve at a distance or, or LCS in truly subquadratic time, you solve SAT on huge things faster. So one thing is any circuit of little o of n depth. So this is much bigger than the class NC. Uh, you can even solve SAT on non-deterministic Turing machines as long as they use little o of square root n space, uh, and even on arbitrary Boolean formulas of two to the little o of n size. So, yeah, so it's going to be very hard to solve LCS faster. That's 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 what I'm saying. And uh, yeah, I think it's you know it's evident that these consequences are big. But just to give you more kind of to convince you, let me tell you about uh, what they would imply what these consequences would imply. So for that, I'm going to tell you about the circuit lower bounds barrier. What is this thing? So, so this is kind of an argument, not, not, that, uh, not that, you know, that some consequence is going to be very surprising or like it'll imply something that we think is false. It'll just say that the consequence that you get from something, from some algorithm, say, is going to be, uh, it's believed to be very hard to show. And so getting such algorithm is going to require you to, you know, to invent like a lot of new techniques. Okay. So, uh, you know, to get this connection to circuit lower bounds, we're going to use this uh, uh, line of work of uh, Ryan, which uh, basically says that uh, from faster SAT algorithms, you can get uh, circuit lower bounds. And uh, what his work shows is that if you solve SAT on circuits from some class C and 2 to the n over some polynomial in n, like n to the 10, so you improve exhaustive search, then uh, you get some uh, that some complexity class is not in some circuit class. Okay. And using this connection, he has this famous result that uh, the class uh, NX is not in uh, an ACC zero. Uh, okay, so it, it was known before that that there was some circuit lower bounds barrier from uh, strong ETH. So it's known that refuting strong ETH. It implies some new lower bound because uh, you can take there are some circuits uh, these uh, series parallel circuits that can translate well into CNFs and then uh, from faster CNF you can get some uh, you know new circuit lower bounds but uh, you know just to kind of explain what I how I am thinking of these things uh, without like complexity language uh, so th this is what this this means so th here there's this line where complex theory is today. And there's, you know, it goes on to where we would like to be, where the things we, we really want to show. And uh, this consequence that you get from strong ETH being false is really a tiny, tiny improvement. Uh, whereas what we get, you know, from the new uh, reduction uh, is that uh, faster LCS and edit distance uh, implies circuit lower bound that seem very, very far in the future. They are uh, very, very strong. Like, you know, as the, this one was like linear size formulas, and here we have two to the little of n formulas. Um, yeah, so what this kind of shows is, you know, if you, if you want to be a circuit lower bounds millionaire, you know, try to solve LCS faster. That's one way to do it. Okay, so this was uh, our first result. Uh, we basically took these strong ETH lower bounds and we say you don't need to assume strong ETH, you can assume something much more believable. The second, uh, the second result that I'm going to tell you about that you get from this work is, uh, is that even shaving logs is going to be hard. There's a barrier for that. Um, all right, so now let's look at mildly subquadratic algorithms. So, as I told you, the current best algorithm for these problems is the log squared improvement. And it's been a long-standing open question to improve this log squared. So get anything better than that. And uh, 
you know, when when you have such a, an important problem like at the distance, this is this is a very important question. Like we really want to know the exact complexity of these problems. And uh, recent techniques showed uh, kind of similar, uh, uh, you know, shaving log uh, breakthroughs for other very fundamental problems, like uh, for three sum on real numbers, and uh, and this is, uh, and uh, this work by Ryan for uh, all pair shortest paths. And uh, this technique, so the technique that he introduced, uh, so it shaves uh, log to the little of one of n. So it shaves uh, log to the c for all constants c. It's kind of a clean shave. And uh, using the same technique, uh, there are results that uh, get clean shaves for other problems that look kind of pretty similar to LCS and edit distance. For example, the longest common substring of two sequences. So a substring is a contiguous uh, subsequence. Uh, we got some uh, some big uh, uh, savings there. So this naturally led to the question that's been stated in many of these papers: uh, is whether you can do uh, edit distance or LCS with this technique and uh, this, uh, you know, shave, shave logs for them. Uh, and from the previous work, uh, from the strong ETH lower bounds, uh, the, we could not say anything about this because. Even if you get these results, you wouldn't get a new algorithm for CNF set. I mean, you would get some algorithm, but it would be slower than the currently uh, known algorithms. Uh, but what, from our reduction, because we start from circuit, uh, from circuits, not CNFs, then these savings are going to imply new uh, uh, SAT algorithms. And uh, so here's here's an example of such an algorithm. So take NC1 uh, SAT. So SAT on log depth circuits. With Barrington's theorem, this gives you branching programs of polynomial length and uh, with five. And from our reduction, you get instances of LCS uh, on 2dn over 2 times poly n uh, sequences. And then if you do this clean shave for LCS, this implies 2 to the n over an uh, arbitrarily large polynomial for NC1 sat. And uh, from Ryan's work, this implies that some class is not in, in NC1. So you get this. Uh, Circuit lower bound that would be a bit, very big breakthrough. So, yeah, so it's going to be uh, hard to to get this uh, improvement. Uh, but now let's be even more fine grained and see, you know, how many logs can we shave? Uh, that that one said that you're not going to shave all poly logs. So here, let's uh, just be uh, less kind of. Uh, Ambitious, let's just look at uh, lower bounds for specific polynomials. So let's say we want to show that this class doesn't have uh, formulas of size n to the 5. This is not known. It's not known how to show these things uh, with current techniques. Uh, so then we look at SAT on formulas of size n to the 5. And with some kind of uh, complexity uh, translations, we get uh, some branching programs of some size. And from our reduction, we get sequences of 2 to the n over 2 times n to the 800. This is a kind of a some, some constant that depends on the 5. It's a fixed number. And then we show that uh, if you shave this log to the 800 for LCS, then you get uh, fast enough set to, to imply the lower bound. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you the proof of our reduction uh, you know, in the next few slides. But uh, so when I gave this talk two weeks ago, you know, it was so clear that the, the people after the talk, like, you know, understood it so well that they told me how to improve it. Uh, and they, they observed that uh, we don't even need to go through uh, branching programs. Uh, we can just reduce formula set directly from our gadgets to, to LCS. And when you do this, you get uh, kind of a tighter connection. Instead of 800, you can go down to 80. And uh, so we're, going, we're getting down with these uh, logs. And of course, we would, we would like to get tight bounds. We would like to kind of give reasons for why even another, uh, you know, log log is hard. Um, yeah, but I, I think we're, we're getting there. I'll say a bit more about this uh, in the end. Uh, and so one kind of cool uh, thing that this says is that when undergrads, you know, we're giving them LCS in, in our you know, basic classes and, you know, they think whether they can solve it faster and so on, what they're really trying to do is that they're trying to prove new circuit lower bounds. All right, so the rest of the talk is going to, uh, I'm going to tell you about the reduction. I'm going to show you how this works, how you can uh, take branching programs and, and uh, simulate them with LCS. So LCS can, you know, encode an algorithm for, uh, for branching programs at. Uh, but let me just say that, 
So yeah, I'm gonna do this one reduction to LCS. Is gonna, I'm gonna use a kind of a large alphabet and so on. But in the paper, uh, we show that any problem for which the the general framework of Carl and Marvin that shows strong ETH lower bounds, uh, the strong ETH can be replaced with uh, branching program strong ETH, and so you can get the same lower bound for uh, at the distance LCS on binary sequences, for example. Uh, but we also show lower bounds for things that are not in that framework, like computing the uh, LCS of K sequences, so it's an N to the K problem, and we show that improving, improvement over that are also hard. Uh, but uh, So we don't know how to replace all of the strong ETH lower bounds with, with this new thing. Some very interesting open question uh, are about, say, the diameter of a sparse graph, the reachability in dynamic graphs, and subtree isomorphism, these are problems that we do have strong ETH lower bounds, but we don't know how to get this harder uh, hard, hardness. So, you know, when I show you the, if you're familiar with these strong ETH lower bounds, it'll be uh, cool to think about how wide it, it, uh, it breaks for these problems and, and whether you can try to do it in some other way. Okay, okay so here, here's the outline for, uh, for the reduction. Uh, so in the, I'm going to restrict myself to width 5 and the polynomial uh, length. Uh, and so we're going to start from branching program sat. The first step is going to reduce, it's going to be an easy step uh, to some uh, some kind of pair problem that it's kind of like the orthogonal pairs problem when when you work with strong ETH. Um, and then we're going to reduce this to some LCS pair problem and then to LCS. Uh, so what do I mean? Let me just uh, go ahead and start doing these steps. So, so our, uh, this is our first step. So we take uh, we take branching program set. Say we're given some branching program, and we w we're trying to figure out if there's some input that makes it, uh, uh, you know, makes S able to reach T. And so our first step is just going to be to split the inputs into two sets. So look at all bit vectors of length n over two, and put put them here, and then put them there. Call these A, call them B. What uh, I just reformulated the sad problem to this problem where I ask you to find uh, one bit vector from here uh, and uh, one bit, bit vector from here that together, when you put them together as a satisfying assignment, they satisfy the branching program. Okay? So w but when you pick one from here, it, uh, you set half of the variables. So when you ha set half of the variables, you get some edges. The, you restrict some of the edges in the branching programs that you can use. And then picking the other uh, half restricts some other edges. And then the question is, you know, can you find a pair that m makes it so that you, you can reach uh, your, your target? So this uh, you know, is not going to be useful for the rest of the proof, but it's a cool way to think about this uh, problem that we're uh, reducing from is, is that uh, it's kind of a graph problem now. You have the, some underlying graph on, say, polynomial number of nodes. And then you're given two lists of subgraphs, uh, long lists, like 2 to the n over 2 subgraphs. Each one is you know, telling you some edges. And then you're trying to find a pair such that when you put the, the edges together, you get a path from s to t. So this might be useful for future uh, reductions. Okay. Uh, so back to, to our proof. So uh, after you kind of split the variables into two, two sets and you're trying to find a pair that uh, satisfy the branching program, now we start talking about LCS. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each uh, bit vector and we're going to transform it into some sequence over some alphabet. Uh, we're going to do this for each one, uh, you know, each one on the first list and the second list. And then uh, we're going to look for a pair of sequences such that the LCS of this pair is large. This is what I call the LCS pair problem. We're given two lists of sequences. They're pretty short. They're going to be like polynomial length, whereas the number is exponential. Uh, and you're trying to find a pair that has large LCS. Um, and then we're going to take this LCS pair problem, and we're going to reduce it to, uh, to LCS. So, by, so in LCS, you only have, you have two sequences, not, uh, like, not lists. And uh, this step is just going to be from previous work. I'm not going to. Uh, tell you about it. If you haven't seen this before, it roughly looks like this. You take these, all, the first list of, list of sequences, you just put them in one sequence with some padding between, some cleverly chosen padding. Then you take the second list and you put them in some other sequence. And then you argue that uh, if a, a good pair existed, then the total LCS of these two sequences is going to be large. Okay. Uh, so back to the outline. 
So this is what I was saying. So you start from branching program set, you're used to the pair problem. This is just a reformulation. It's not, nothing's going on there. It's, it's a green arrow. It's very easy. Uh, then we are going to, our main kind of thing is to uh, tell you how to get from, go from these bit vectors to these sequences, that, uh, such that like the LCS is checking satisfiability. And then, uh, then once we are at this LCS pair, we just use previous work, and, and then we go to LCS. And let me just compare this with the strong ETH lower bounds. So uh, here, the, the difference is, is essentially in this arrow. And here, this was conce conceptually is very easy. I mean, it was hard to prove because you had to do all these gadgets. But what was really going on here is you, has, you had uh, two uh, bit vectors, and you were asking, you know, we were trying to find two ve vectors such that in every coordinate, one of them is zero. This was this question. And then reducing it to LCS was conceptually very easy. You just take each coordinate and you know, turn it into some sequence, and such that two kind of sequences tell you if there's one of them is 0, then you combine them. You know, it was simple. But here, it's, it's, it's not, because you know, the, the, two, the sequences are trying to check uh, you know, reachability in some branching program and so on. Okay, so, but, so this is how we're going to do it. Um, so, all right, so now fi fix some branching program. You know, th this is the input to the reduction. It's some branching program. Uh, fix it. And then, uh, and now fix a pair of uh, bit strings, A and B. For this bit string, we're, uh, <coughs> for this A and B, we're going gonna, gonna to tell you how to produce uh, the two gadgets. And I'm going to show you that these gadgets are, are going to work well. So what we really want is that uh, the LCS of these two gadgets is large when there's a path from S to T when you restrict your, uh, your inputs according to A and B. And uh, to do this, we're going to do a more general construction of reachability gadgets. So for any pair of nodes in the branching programs, U and V, we're going to construct some gadget. It's parameterized by uh, U and V and the, the, the bit, uh, bit string A, and similarly for B, such that uh, we can prove some properties of these gadgets. First property is the kind of important one. The LCS of this, these two sequences is going to be large, uh, larger some, some, than some parameter that depends on, on k. So k is the, uh, so the length, the, uh, u is at some layer, v is some layer, and the distance is 2 to the k. Uh, so the LCS will be large uh, when there's a path. Uh, and the, then the length of these gadgets is not going to be too bad. It's going to be exponential in k. Uh, and we're going to construct this in, in linear time. And, uh, and once we have this, we're done. Because uh, then we just you know, imp uh, construct these gadgets for when, where u and v are just s and t. And then k is log the length of the branching program. And this exponential in the log is, is, uh, is going to become polynomial in the length. Okay. So how do we construct these gadgets? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, in general, there's, uh, there's some dependence on the width. So it's some uh, width to the constant times uh, k. Yeah. Okay. Um, OK, so here's the main idea. So we have some node u and some node v. We want to know if there's a path from u to v. Uh, we're just going to do this recursively. Uh, we're going to assume we, we know uh, whether there's a <clears throat> whether for, uh, we're going to look at the middle layer between them, look at the nodes there, and just say that you know this kind of uh, logical uh, equality. So there's a path from U to V, if and only if uh, one of these things happen. Either there's a path from U to W1 and from W1 to V, or you know, or for, uh, through W2 or W3. And this is kind of uh, what uh, Savage's uh, theorem does. Yeah. And so the kind of the main thing that we do is that we notice that each one of these checks, uh, we're going to be able to construct it uh, recursively. So we're going to assume we have, for all k less than, you know, for all smaller k, we did construct some gadgets that do what we want. They do tell us reachability. And then we're going to combine these level k minus 1 gadgets with this kind of uh, uh, logical uh, relationship uh, into our new gadgets. Okay. So the point is that this constraint is going to happen. It's going to be true if the LCS is large. All right, and 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 here's here how, uh, what it looks like. It's it's a very simple construction. So I'm telling you how to construct the gadgets of level k. 
And I'm assuming I have level, uh, level K minus one gadgets. So take the, the two level K minus one gadgets that correspond to W1, and then just put them next to each other in the first sequence. And then the second sequence, you do the same. And then you put some, uh, you kind of package them together with some padding. Th this functions as an end. So uh, these uh, paddings you put are very expensive. You always want to match them. And then once you match them, you have to match this to that and this to that. And uh, the score of the matching of these two parts is uh, really the sum of this matching and that matching. And this one was kind of large if there was a path through, uh, from U to W1. This one was large if there's a path from W1 to V. And so uh, the total score will be good of, of these two parts if, uh, if there's a path through W1. So this was the, uh, our implementation of an AND gadget. And then, uh, so, okay, we, ta we take the, this one was for W1, we take the same one for W2 and W3, we put them next to each other. And now we want to implement an OR. So we want to let the LCS choose one of them, at least uh, one of them, uh, so the path goes uh, go through it. And uh, we're going to do this by adding some uh, more padding. Okay. So before I explain uh, how this uh, OR gadget padding works, let me just say that uh, you know once we have this, uh, we're done. Uh, because So these paddings that we're putting here, uh, so this Q, its length is going to be like maybe 10 times the total length of the level K minus 1 gadget. And then the more expensive ones, like the P and the, and the R, they're going to be you know, 10 times that and 10 times that. But in total, the total length of this whole thing is maybe 10 to the 4 times the length of the, the lower level one. And so you know, the higher you go in the, in the levels, you get uh, some exponential. Uh, like the total length is going to be exponential in K. This is what we wanted. Okay, but but let me let me explain why it works. Uh, okay, so uh, R is the most expensive letter. Uh, if you don't match R, you lose. It's not, your LCS is not optimal, and there are only two R's in the first sequence. I'm, I'm talking about the case where we have three. Uh, the width is three, but the same arguments work for uh, larger width. So you have now you have uh, these two R's must be matched. There are more R's here. So you, can, you have a choice uh, of where to match them. You can either match them to the right, or match one right, one left, or both uh, to the left. But notice that uh, when you do these uh, decisions, so if you match them to the left, then th these two parts can no longer be matched uh, to anything meaningful. So this kind of choice uh, said that you, you're really choosing this one. Okay. So let, let's assume you did that. Uh, then the second most important letter is, is this uh, P. Uh, and now, so the, there's two, only two P's here, then you want to match both of them. And so there's enough P's here, and you just do it. And then uh, these two are not relevant anymore, and you're left with this and that. Okay. And so then these two parts start interacting, and they interact in this end kind of way. You match the Q's, and then you get the, these two matchings. Um, so. The point is, uh, all these uh, kind of P, Q, R matches, they, they have a fixed contribution. They don't depend on the lower level gadgets. But then the, the, the orange arrows, they do depend on whether the, uh, there, were, there was a path in the kind of the things you recurs to. And so the total, uh, the total LCS of this thing is going to be large if and only if uh, you could do this, uh, you could find some uh, W to go through. Um, all right, and uh, okay, so we do this uh, kind of recursive construction until we, we reach the, the base case, and uh, in this case, uh, the k is zero, and the two uh, nodes are on adjacent layers, and then we look at u and v, and uh, there's uh, some edge between them, or there's not an edge between them, and then uh, we, we want to define these gadgets, and now we start looking at the inputs. Up until now, we didn't look at, at the a and b, the bit strings. Um, okay. So. Okay. Uh, all right. So now look at this uh, this edge from U to V, and it's it's uh, labeled by some uh, variable x i. 
this, uh, this xi uh, either belongs to A or to B. So A is assigning some half of the variables, B is assigning some other half of the variables. I belongs to one of them. Uh, say, say it belongs to A, and then we say that A is responsible for this variable, and it's responsible for this edge. Uh, and so we define A's gadget uh, this way, so A checks whether its bits are consistent with the edge. So it looks at xi, it checks what its Boolean value it's giving it, and then uh, if it's consistent with the edge, so if it's giving it 0 and the edge says 0, then it puts this letter V. Otherwise, it's not consistent. It doesn't agree with this edge. Something went wrong, in the, like the LCS is trying to cheat us into taking a path that doesn't really exist, and then we put some uh, dollar sign. And then the other sequence in B, uh, so we, we basically do the same, except uh, this dollar sign never appears. So if we put a dollar sign here, uh, then we're not going to be able to match. Uh, and the only way we're going to get a match if both of them put a V. And they put Vs only when they're both consistent. And, and so if, uh, if B was uh, not responsible for the edge, if the very, it doesn't know what this uh, assignment to Xi is, it just puts a V anyway. So you only don't put a V when uh, you don't disagree with the edge. Right. So, and this is, this is the whole construction. Now let me just kind of give you a, a pictorial uh, representation of what's going on in the LCS. So say this is the, some level uh, K gadget that corresponds to some U and V. And we had this uh, three parts, each corresponding to uh, the three nodes in the middle. And uh, now we're the LCS is trying to find some path. And say it first chooses to take the first node in the uh, middle layer. So it's going to match this part and that part. And these parts are not going to be relevant. And then uh, the LCS is, is going to pick some node in the, uh, here. Say it picks the second one. So the second one here starts uh, contributing, whereas the others don't, don't uh, participate anymore. Uh, whereas here in this part, maybe you chose the third one. So you go on with this, and so on. OK, so that's the end of my proof. Um, let me just conclude with some uh, kind of uh, recent progress. So uh, as I said, if you, if you go do the same, with the same gadgets, if you start from formulas, you can uh, take SAT on some kind of formulas of size S uh, and get sequences of size 2 to the n over 2 times S to the 80. And uh, by some kind of formulas, I mean uh, you can not only look at uh, and or formulas, but you can also think of other gates. Um, and uh, we are hoping to get 2 to the n over 2 times s. Uh, and I think we might be able to get uh, an s squared. Um, and so like, you know, say, say you did get uh, 2 to the n over 2 times s, then you can sh show that shaving a log to the c factor implies this runtime for, for formula set. And then, you know, these connections might show that uh, shaving another log for, for LCS will imply some new formula set algorithms. But this is this. Uh, we're still developing that and you know, trying to figure out what kind of statements we can say. Um, okay. So, uh, so again, what we showed is that uh, in this strong ETH class, there's a harder subclass. You know, you can base it on a better conjecture. It even has uh, implications to circuit lower bounds. Uh, one interesting question is to see if these other classes, the threesome class or the APSP class, maybe they also have harder subclasses in them. It'll be interesting to to find them. And of course, the other interesting question is to get some uh, these better lower bounds for other uh, problems in, in the strong ETH class. That's it. Thanks. Uh, we have time for a short question. Um, or have you? Have you found uh, many problems that are um, more than just Ceph hard related to like circuit SAP? Like there's some larger class of circuits SAP where than just CNF where it's hard for those. Besides this problem, are there any other problems? Uh, yeah, currently uh, the list is uh, yeah LCS at distance, uh, some other similarity measures over sequences. Uh, yeah, we don't have yeah. We don't have like graph problems or other things like that yet, but yeah. Mm -hmm.
answering his question. There, there were, there are problems that are harder than CNFSAT, like MACSAT, where there were problems in polynomial time, uh, un under the assumption that those problems require exponential time. Sorry. Uh, yes. Yes. That no. already was known to be hard under a, a, a weaker assumption than strong ETA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So for, for some uh, lower bounds, yes, you can replace uh, CNF set with like max uh, max set. Yes. Uh, yeah. So I mean, th there could actually be a hierarchy. You know, not everything can be either CNF set or this Banjik program set. There could be things in between. Uh, yeah.